Doctor, there's a number of different types of cancers and a number of different therapies. How do you match the two together, the therapy with a certain cancer? Okay, uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. And uh, to tell you the truth, uh, nobody really, nobody in, in this world, in the 21st century, can really tell how to manage one cancer different from another. And if you see cancer therapies, they're very much alike because you're trying to fight a condition that we, again, do not understand fully. But in general, we have some groups of cancers that are pretty obvious. One of them is what the so-called carcinomas, the tumors that develop in, in, in glandular organs like the stomach, the breast, the prostate, the colon, the, which are probably some of the most common cancers. Mm -hmm. Some of them that originate in, in, in other type of tissues like sarcomas, like the bone, the muscle, which are not as frequent as the carcinomas. And then we have a, a number of uh, the blood-borne uh, uh, cancers like uh, leukemias, lymphomas, uh, and uh, multiple myeloma and some other forms of cancer that are really atypical like uh, melanoma which is very malignant okay so in those groups we tend to use uh, kind of different situations but very much at the bottom line very much alike uh, why because we're very confident that the more we can restore the ability of the body to fight off, to identify cancer cells and destroy them, the better off we are. We know that regardless of the origin of the cancer, the heat is going to destroy them. We know that uh, oxidative therapies like ozone, hyperbaric oxygen, is going to be good for the treatment just about of every cancer. But in, in certain circumstances, for example, like the malignant melanoma, the immune management is fundamental. If you don't do immune management, and in those mm -hmm. cases, we, you, we, we can even use powerful vaccines, like the tuberculosis vaccine. You vaccine the person as if the person had tuberculosis, because that elicits a very uh, high uh, immune activity, and, and, and you, can, you can help a patient with, uh, with melanoma. Actually, some of the most amazing cases that we have are melanomas. We have a lady here in 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 Los Angeles area that I first saw in 1978 and she's still alive and I know one of these days they're going to tell me she's gone but she's 90 something okay it will be just about natural we have a, a, a another girl from uh, Australia who we saw in 1980 and she's still well and alive and working and uh, with a melanoma that had been operated on two times, given completely up and so forth. And, and that's another of the, of the situations. I always tell people I don't do this because I like to suffer. I like to do this because I like to see people doing well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I have seen cases that are really short of a miracle. And if you, and many people say, okay, what did you do in this particular case that gave you this fantastic result? And the answer is, I don't really know. I know that something in that body clicked and changed the biology of the person and put that cancer under control. Because I have patients that uh, yesterday evening I found uh, a person that we saw uh, 20 years ago. Okay, people, uh, people that when you see them, you feel like saying, oh, wow, you're still alive. You can't believe it. People who were told you have three months to live, mm -hmm. which is, for whatever reason, very frequent that oncologists tell you how long you have to live. I don't know how they do that, but, uh, but they do it. And, and you see these people going through processes and, and doing well and, and living very, very, very long time. So... Uh, I, I think there are, there's a lot of room for improvement in cancer therapy. Uh, we are beginning to see, for example, a little bit more of inroads in the immunological side of cancer therapy, but mm. still, still not enough, mm. and still very little attention on the well-being of the host. You can see now, for example, at MD Anderson, 
uh, at Sloan Kettering, at uh, Mayo Clinic, you can see now uh, alternative medicine uh, divisions that are working um, mainly with the well-being of the patient. It's kind of mm -hmm. downing on them that if the person is doing well, the cancer is going to do better and the therapies are going to be better tolerated. But uh, the rule is that you try to kill that cancer no matter what, even if you kill the patient. Okay, So that's, that's really the rule. But uh, I am absolutely convinced that one day we're going to look back to medicine and we're going to look at chemotherapy with the same disdain that we talk about leeches today. You're going to say, this is unbelievable. How could we do it? You see, but it's mm -hmm. just out of ignorance because we, uh, we don't have the real description of what exactly cancer is. But I think it's within our hands to prevent it, to manage it, and to conquer it ultimately. Mm. If we don't do anything ourselves, if we just leave it to the good doctor, I don't think we're going to go very far. Mm.